Bienvenidos al Nueve Presidente. Libertarian candidate Javier Malay has become the new president of Argentina, defeating his rival and current ec economy minister, Sergio Massa. Now, Malay wrote a wave of popular discontent over Argentina's horrific economy to victory in the recent elections. The country suffers from 143% inflation. Four in 10 Argentinians live below the poverty line. Malay's critics are concerned about his proposed wide-sweeping reforms, including swapping the peso for the U.S. dollar, eliminating the central bank alongside a, a number of other government ministries. Mm. Here to talk to us about this historic victory and what his presidency might look like is associate editor at Reason, Liz Wolf. Liz, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, nice to have you back. And I know you've um, looked at this issue uh, more than we have and have interviewed um, experts for reason about the situation there. Talk to us a little bit about Javier Malay's appeal. Um, he, obviously, he's been described as a libertarian, which, you know, one of our people, although like elsewhere in the media, they're like, no, he's a far right Trumpist. So can you go over his, his views a little bit? Absolutely. So Malay's kind of an interesting character. He definitely aesthetically and rhetorically seems an awful lot like Trump. So I can understand where some of that characterization is coming from. He is very blunt. He is very candid. He does engage in some culture war sparring, let's be real. Um, he has like a past life as a tantric sex coach. I mean, he's a bizarre, iconoclastic character. However, the great however is... He is legitimately seeming like a classical liberal in a bunch of different ways. I mean, he is interested in, you know, slashing the central bank. He's interested in dollarization. He's really, really interested in cutting public spending in Argentina. So he's basically looking at the inflationary situation there and saying, we have to make drastic changes. We're in, a situ we're in an emergency situation. This is something that so few administrations and so few candidates recently have really advocated. And people are struggling and suffering on the ground because of hyperinflation. So it's wonderful that he believes in that. He is a free trade guy. He's into drug legalization. Uh, in a lot of ways, he is legitimately a pretty hardcore libertarian. He is also not stooping into sort of Bolsonaro type discourse or Duterte things about trying to use authoritarian means to crush political opponents or drug dealers or people he dislikes. That's something you sometimes see from these like wannabe autocrats. And he's he's really not that so far. Uh, I have seen some people having mixed feelings about this, not as you kind of described, having difficulty casting him as a uh, libertarian versus MAGA and the mix of policies that he's supporting puts him somewhere in between. I've seen some mixed feelings about how he immediately showed support for um, Israel as we continue to watch the siege on Gaza. He said he has no problem with the IMF because his own uh, policies, fiscal policies that he plans to implement are more uh, uh, extreme than what the IMF, more austere than what the IMF would impose on Argentina. How do you parse uh, the mix of policies that he's been advocating for here? And how are they being perceived? How is the election being perceived in Argentina? Well, I chalk it up to the fact that libertarians are frankly hard to place, as you know, because you uh, co-host with the libertarian and have people like me on as guests, right? Like we do have a little bit of a bizarre hodgepodge of beliefs that I think is sometimes, um, you know, a little bit uncomfortable for a lot of people who are more devoutly on the left or right. And I, I use devoutly deliberately. So I think Malay is very much uh, aligned with that in keeping with that. But the thing that I, I would also say is I'm a little bit worried about some of the rhetoric that we've seen from him. We specifically saw a little bit of almost foregrounding possible election denialist claims, um, you know, casting doubt on election integrity. That is before he actually won it. So stuff like that makes me a little bit concerned, stealing things from the Trump playbook. However, I would also say there is a consistent uh, and pretty massive growing cohort of younger Argentines who basically looked at the legacy of Peronist politicians, um, you know, since the 1950s and say, hey, this has driven our economy absolutely into the ground. We fear uh, for our futures. We don't really have the ability to save. We can't buy homes for ourselves. Our money is essentially worthless. And I think there's a lot of younger people in Argentina who maybe aren't even particularly excited about the culture war stuff, but are a little bit like, well, I'm 30 years old and I have no means of saving for my future and building a family and building a life. So I think that's a part that a lot of the media misses.
Mm. Uh, initially, in the early round of voting, he didn't do as well as expected, and then they had this very, uh, very decisive victory in the ultimate election, which took place the other day. Um, you know, what what do you think he's going to concentrate on on first, and, and what would you know? What does improving the financial situation actually look like? Well, we have to be realistic here. He doesn't have a coalition. He doesn't have a ton of allies in the government. He is a political outsider. Um, you know, the media has been right in that way. I think there have been a lot of mainstream media headlines that have described him as, you know, a MAGA type, a, a far right populist. And it's like, well, he's an individualist. He's not a populist, really. That's not how I would characterize him. Um, and there's a lot that that talks about what a threat he is. Really, he's going to be pretty reined in by the fact that he just doesn't have that much of a coalition to govern with yet. Um, and so to some degree, what we will probably see is a system of pretty extraordinary gridlock, at least for a while. It'll be kind of interesting to see whether he actually has the pragmatism and has the ability to build a coalition to actually push some of these things through. Mm. Um, I think that that could possibly be a really frustrating thing because he might have good ideas for especially cutting public spending, um, you know, cutting the amount of the, that is spent on social services. That could be something that is legitimately helpful in terms of writing Argentina's ship. Uh, but I do think it's important to take all of this with a hefty grain of salt. We don't know how this is going to play out in the real world. And platitudes and talk are one thing, and they're very cheap, but we actually have to see some results from him. Mm. Yeah, it would be interesting to see if he's successful. Some of the uh, agenda points that he has that have gotten some scrutiny uh, include a desire to legalize the sale of children and human organs, abolishing public health care and education and transportation, as, as you've mentioned, and uh, abandoning monetary sovereignty. That is, you know, sig a significant move. And I think that someone that mo most Americans can't really wrap our head around the idea that we would abandon uh, the dollar uh, entirely for another country's currency. I do think it'll be interesting to play out if he is able to implement some of these things, what a kind of maximalist libertarian vision looks like and whether or not people are going to have a different perspective on the value of some of those social safety net programs if, in fact, they no longer can rely on them and the um, economic upswing to the economy either doesn't happen or doesn't accrue to people at the very bottom, which often happens. So I'm, I'm for one, apprehensive, but interested to see what it looks like to see real libertarian, uh, libertarianism play out on a national level. Yeah. Now, if it doesn't He's work, we can point to Argentina. advocating for selling children? <laughs> yeah. I think what do you, what do you mean? Uh, organs. Organs, yeah. Yeah, not, just not organs. Like not, uh, yeah, I, I heard uh, you say selling children and organs, or maybe that was just a... a uh, weird slide just, of mouth. Just selling yeah, organs. No. Oh, just organs. Yeah, no, legalizing organ selling is one of those things. There are a few sort of like oddball libertarian proposals that I think rub people the wrong way, but legitimately we have, what, 43,000 people who have like end-stage kidney failure every year in the United States, and we have a massive shortage of, of donor kidneys available. And so, you know, I kind of wonder if we do add markets to things and maybe even, you know, regulate parts of that market, whether allowing people to be compensated in the same way that we allow people to be compensated for plasma in this country. And as a result, we supply a lot of the world's plasma. It's basically just applying that model to things like, you know, kidneys. Hmm. I think it's a little different because your plasma replenishes uh, unlike a kidney. But I take your point, Liz. Thanks so much there's for joining of, us. There's a lot of good research on this. I highly recommend just not writing him off as a, as a wackadoodle libertarian. I do think that there's some interesting things that he's going to pursue. Thank you, guys. Thank you.